What's up, y'all? Welcome to Lick of the Day. I've been feeling a little bit down lately with everything going on in the news and the election cycle, and nothing cheers me up quite like a brand new lick. Today we're talking about the Joey DeFrancesco lick. And if you don't know, Mr. DeFrancesco is one of the greatest organ players on the planet. He's also one of the guys with the fastest chops that I've ever heard in my entire life. And this is one of those licks you can whip out uh, that doesn't sound too crazy. You know, you're not going to get fired from your gig. But it'll definitely turn some heads and make everybody in your band say, Oh, man, that dude's been practicing. So I actually transposed this lick down a half step from the original key that I heard it in, which was A flat major. So let's move it back down now from the key of A flat to the key of G. Uh, the harmony that this lick is outlining is a 2-5 in the key of G, which is simply A minor 7 going to D7, dominant 7 there. So the lick starts us off with the 9 up here, this B in the right hand, and you want to be real familiar with these skipping uh, patterns here, these hand positions, if you want to get super duper quick with this lick. Practice just this first little piece first, then we bring it back down to another nine here, and if you notice, this is a pretty common pattern in all different types of music, uh, so familiarize yourself with this as well. You can also do this with simply 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's keep moving to the next little bit here. Chromatic. Now what I'm doing with the fingering is kind of fun here uh, because you want to pivot so you make sure you get your whole hand down there for the rest of the lick. So when I go to this B, I'm moving to my two finger, which essentially sets up my hand for the rest of the position. Two, three, four, five. Now my thumb, my other fingers are all down here. Whereas we started up here. Once my pinky's here, now I'm in position for the rest of it and I shouldn't have to move or do any other crazy crossings for the rest of this. Back to the chord tone, back to the C. And then again here. So we're really aiming for these Bs, this top B first, and then the bottom B. So let's catch up, let's see where we're at so far. Two, three, four, five. Now we're here. All within the scale, the A minor scale here. Every little piece, you want to separate it, break it out, practice it separately. Staccato, legato, fast, slow. Let's see where we're at now. That's simply three, one, two, one. No fancy technique here yet. Now here, Instead of going one, two, I'm gonna go one, four. Why? So again, so I can set up the rest of my hand for the lower notes that are coming up next. Okay, here we go. Four, three, one, two, one. And then down here, two, one again. Two, one, two, one. Now the end of that, there's a little pattern that I want to point out here. 
has a really cool like bebop kind of flavor to it. Um, and again, if you're playing in any jazz context, or especially if you're playing in like a neo soul or an R&B or funk kind of context, this will really turn some heads. So just this last little piece you can take and apply in all kind of different places. So let's take a peek here at what this is going to look like on the staff. And as I wrote it on the staff, it's all 16th notes, but that way we can really see where each piece of this breaks down and where the little techniques are hiding in there. There it is. Uh, as you can see, they're all 16th notes. And we just end on this long uh, D note at the very end of the second measure there. Now, I would say the first half of this first measure is really where the first little chunk of this is. Bum, 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 bum. And then make sure when you're practicing that you link this to the C. Because that's how you're going to make sure that you're setting yourself up for what comes next. We got this big jump down here. Now the way I would practice this and the way I kind of figured this out initially was I did one note added at a time. So for example, and you can add one note each time as you go. Uh, that way you're getting an extra drill on the first piece, but you're not making your work uh, too hard on yourself trying to get the whole thing all at once. Uh, then this all in here is just sort of finger work, guys. It's That's all just these four fingers. One, two, four, three, one, two, one. That's, again, there's no cheat code to that. It's just it's something you're going to have to go over a few times and just get that last little section there. Now the end, probably the most challenging piece about this is the end because of this weird uh, chromaticness that happens, but it, but it goes right back into skipping, goes right back into stepping. So there's a lot of like uh, dramatic shifts in uh, how the melody is going, which direction it's going, how it's moving, the contour of it, etc., etc. So again, okay, add one note each time. Uh, another thing you can do to practice this is accent in different places. Accent. 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 Okay, so that's the lick broken down into sheet music. I'm going to switch it back over here to uh, the piano roll, and I'll show you a couple little tricks you can do to this to modify it to make it more of your own thing so you're not plagiarizing. And then I'll do a little jam utilizing the movements from this lick. Boom, and there we are, back to piano roll. Uh, here we go. So first thing that you can do, take that little chromatic piece, and instead of playing it as 16th notes, hold it back a little bit, and then do a little triplet. Triplet. You can do it again here. So this is sort of uh, applying a little bit of a rubato type of feel to what's going on here. Uh, another place you could put it is right at the beginning. Okay, all over the place. Uh, plus, it's, it's usually a good idea to practice stuff, you know, with different rhythms, different rhythmic alterations. Anyway, it'll give you a lot more control over the lick. You'll be able to integrate it into different uh, places. So here's an example of maybe a jazz funk kind of groove that you could use this lick on.
again, just kind of because I was practicing it earlier in both keys, you can definitely do that in the lick. All that kind of cool stuff is uh, definitely thinking outside the box in how you apply this lick. So if you like this lick, definitely leave a like on this video and uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified on future licks. I got a Keith Emerson lick coming out very soon. And leave me a comment. Do you listen to guys like Joey De Francesco? Do you think it's valuable for piano players to listen to organ players and vice versa? Let me know your experience with translating licks from this instrument over to another instrument, because that's basically the whole point of this lick. Uh, you wouldn't maybe normally do something like that on the piano, but let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Make sure to share this video with all the jazz musicians you know, all the piano players, all the organ players, and all of the improvisers that you know. And I will see you all on the next lick. Peace.